What's going on everybody? Stained Glass Assassin. I had a really great time doing my Wizards and Warriors playthrough a couple weeks ago, so I thought, what the hell, let's play another video game. So I decided to go with Beavis and Butthead for the Sega Genesis. Now, if you grew up in the mid-90s, you remember how popular Beavis and Butthead was. I mean, they were a cultural icon. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere without, you know, somebody making a reference about the show, calling somebody a bunghole, mentioning the Great Cornholio. I mean, from 94 to like 97... They were, you know, the kings of cultural, well, teenage, you know, dick and fart jokes, you know. So, uh, obviously, as I've gotten older, their humor isn't quite as what it used to be. But uh, I still have the entire series on a hard drive. Every now and then I pull it out, just put it on the TV for background noise. It brings back a lot of memories. So, uh, But as for the game itself, uh, because they were so popular, obviously they had a lot of licensed uh, properties. You know, they had... Uh, comic books, toys, and of course video games, and obviously we're going to play the Genesis today, but they also had a Super Nintendo, and I think two or maybe three PC games. I know one of them was called Virtual Stupidity, I think it's more like a puzzle, ver or a point and click game. Never actually played it myself, but it looks interesting. I have played the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, so we'll see uh, how much I remember of this game as we play. Now, the game itself is pretty difficult when you're a kid so I'm hoping that I remember everything correctly but since I am using an emulator we'll uh, save state if we have to so anyways let's fire this bad boy up and listen to the opening intro and that'll kind of explain the story and then I'll do the same thing with Wizards and Warriors just kind of go through uh, you know some of the controls and everything along those lines <laughs> old butthead Alright, 1994, so yeah, this was kind of right when they were getting really popular, so... Viacom, New Media. And it starts off just like a TV show, well, after this portion, but... <laughs> pull my finger. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Come on, Beaver, pull it. Okay. <laughs> that was cool. Classic. <laughs> I mean, you know, for a Sega Genesis, I always loved the music of this game. Uh, I especially love the Burger World music. I'll stop and pause on both the Burger World and the uh, Yogurt Place. I love the Yogurt song, so... Alright, here's the story. Let's take a look at this real quick. you get the gist of what's happening. Change it. Change it. Alright, Guar. Can't go wrong with a little Guar. Alright, we're there, dude. You'll notice that their shirts, uh, they had to change it because of license noise. They couldn't use ACDC or Metallica, obviously, so they had to go with the generic Death Rock skull. Mr. Anderson. What the hell? So obviously the tickets got run over. This is the gist of the whole game. You gotta run around the whole... You gotta run around Highland and find the ticket pieces and glue them back together, so... As for the game itself, it's... It's an action game, but it has some puzzle elements. Minimal puzzle elements. Not many, but... Alright. Alright. Let's get out of here. Alright, start this over here. That was just a demo, so... So you start off in your house, and I'll go over the controls real quick. You have run, you hold down and press run, you have a jump button, and then you have an action button, which will either activate your attack for Beavis, it's a burp, you can switch your characters to butthead, to a fart, which will call you a fart knocker. So these are your base attacks, not very strong, we'll get a few more weapons as we go, but as I said, they also... Um, activate items or pick items up. So we'll go over here real quick, pick up this TV remote, which we'll need to essentially travel to levels. Go into the bedroom real quick. This is the room. This poster here. Every time you get a ticket piece, you'll have to put it on the uh, on the piece of paper there. Then you can get your password, which I always hated as a kid because they have lowercase letters and uppercase along with numbers but you can see some of the lowercase letters actually look like lowercase letters like the E and the I but then the F looks like a capital F so when you're like a 10 year old kid and you're writing it down with sloppy handwriting small capital F looks like regular cap ugh 
Many times I was disappointed to find out my password did not work, so... Now, I'm using an emulator, so there are a couple levels that are very difficult, and I'll try not to use it, but I am going to save state if I need to, but I'm gonna... I think I remember the order to do this game with as few headaches as possible, so I think we have to go to Burger World first, so let's take a look at the levels real quick. You have the Turbo Mall, the Guar Concert, which won't go to later, the Drive-In, Highland High School, Hospital, Burger World, and The Street. So I'm gonna go to Burger World. Let's jam out to the music real quick. I don't know, it's so simple, but I just love it. I, I just love the sound of it. it. Reminds me of something from like the 60s, you know, the 50s and 60s, the classic era, you know. Uh, now, there is a hot dog back here, I think. Uh. Yes. So, sometimes you find some hidden hot dogs. So basically, you get hurt by objects like skateboards running around. You saw Todd there using oil to, uh, I guess, scald you. So, now, when you kill an enemy, I'm going to burp on him. They'll drop a burrito or a hot dog, and you can regain your energy. Most enemies will respawn, so that's sometimes a bad thing. But not always, because if I need... He didn't respawn, but... If I need health, I can just essentially keep making them respawn and uh, you know, get the power back. So, all right, I'm gonna go over here and grab the pea shooter and this rat. Damn it! All right, I'm not gonna touch that green burger back there. That'll be for later. So, I'm gonna come up here. The hot chick's gonna nail me, so I'm gonna switch to butthead. All right, so if you played video games in the early '90s, you remember Nintendo Power and Game Pro. Well, there's always been the conspiracy that Genesis and Nintendo was working with those magazines and they made games so difficult that there's no way you could ever figure things out unless you bought the magazine, like playing Mylon Secret Castle or something like that. Well, even as an adult, if I walk up to this and see there's a keypad, naturally I'm going to think that the code is somewhere hidden throughout the game, so I need to go find the code, come back, and unlock the door. But that's not how it works. There is no keypad or the code anywhere in this game. You just have to guess that butthead, numerically, is the password. Now, again, I suppose that might finally, you know, come to mind after a while, but eh, how the hell would I ever know that? You know what I mean? Like, so, through the fries in the fryer, I'm going to throw the rat in the fryer as well. And you see I get this combination of rat and french fries, so we're going to go out here to Stuart's dad. I want service now. And we're going to give him the rat with the fries. Now, real quick, I just wanted to say you can drop items, which I'll show you later. But if you hit this sucks button, you'll drop all items that you've collected in the level, including a ticket piece. And it'll kind of transport you back to the, uh, the house, okay? The only time you would ever really use that is if you were on the brink of death. And you saw your death coming and you just wanted to escape. Because the problem with this game, the reason why it's so difficult is... Even though I can switch between BBUs and Butthead and they have their own health, if one character dies, they both die. You get a game over. So you have to start all the way back at the beginning. So it can be a real pain in the butt. Alright, so I give him the fries. The rat gives me the money. Chugs it down and then he burps it up. So see here, he's got a pile of barf. We gotta go grab the ticket piece. Cool, yeah. Alright, so we see that Beavis is hurt, so this is where, like I said before, now that I have the Pea Shooter, which is the second most powerful item, the uh, Dart Gun is the most powerful, or at least the best weapon to have, because you'll have distance and power. As you see there, the Pea Shooter is much better than getting closer with the burp or the fart, so it just makes sense. All right, so now that I got a ticket piece, I'm going to run back to the house, which you have to use the remote to warp back. And then we'll go back to the bedroom and put the ticket piece on the poster. So, listen to this music. No, oh, I don't want the pants. All right, cool. One piece, yeah. so still got more to go. All right. I'm gonna drop the headphones and the pants. 
Uh, if you drop items in your bedroom, you can always come back and pick them up later, which I did not know that until much later, you know, as an adult playing this game. So that could have saved me a lot of headaches years ago. So where do we want to go? Burger World, Turbo... No, we want to go to the street. That's We're right. There, street is by far the hardest level in the game. Eh, yeah, I would say. And I'll show you why here. We got Earl. Right away comes up. We're going to have to kill him a couple times and get a our power back up because as you'll see in just a second here we're gonna go down to the most difficult section come on where you at Earl well I can kill him with one guy pick up butthead and then run back watch out for that skateboard open up there so this sewer was the bane of my existence as a kid playing this game and even as an adult, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save state just in case, because I might not make it, so... Uh, you'll see here, it's just ridiculous. There are acid, this toxic waste, you have like these fireballs, then you have acid that drips down. There will be rats that run across, and then they have these rats in the foreground that kind of block it. So sometimes you miss a pit, or you miss a rat running through and you get hit. And then there are different size jumps, which the long jumps are almost always going to hurt you as you'll see here because now there's the freaking rats so so you see these long jumps by the time you jump over the second acid drop drop now I, I have gotten through them before and I'm assuming as a grown adult I'll have a little bit more hand-eye coordination and dexterity than I had when I was a kid but yeah, we'll see Ooh, that was close all right so that's a big jump right there now if I go all the way over I can see the second drop but I have to get a running start to make it over so you just have to time this up it's just so hard to jump over that it, it, I've never been able to do it as a kid so can't do it as an adult either so <laughs> all right and I just walked into a rat that's on my fault there god damn it <sighs> see how frustrating this game can be Alright, jump over here, so Beavis is hurt. The good thing is I can always switch and play with Butthead, but again, that strategy only works. Hey, I made a big jump, cool. That only works to a certain degree because if I, I can't switch back, you know, if Butthead gets hurt. So that's where essentially letting enemies spawn and then keep killing them to get power comes in handy. So you have to utilize that at some point. I made it without dying. I'll credit that to being, uh, you know... 27 years older than when I was when I first played the game. So, okay, so we're on the other side of the street. As you can see now, I'm going to go into the junkyard because I have to get one specific item. First and foremost, I'm going to grab the dart gun, which you'll see here turns you into Rambo, gives you this rapid fire, gives you better distance, and I don't know if it necessarily does more damage, but it's the best weapon in the game, trust me. So, all right, so we gotta go through the junkyard. There's barrels of toxic wastes. There's bald eagles flying around. You have these rats that are running all over the place. Very frustrating. And then Todd shows up a couple times. And it just makes matters worse, so. We'll jump up here, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll jump up here and grab Beavis, switch back. Come on. Of course there's rats, you know. Jump over. Do I need the boot? Uh, no, you need it for couch fishing. I'll get the boot, but it's not an essential item. Um, I'll show you why later. I'll show you all the couch fishing. It should be... Todd. Alright, kill Todd, grab a burrito real quick. I don't think Todd responds here, so... I think that was always the problem with this level, is you wanted them to respond because you were always hurt, but you never could get... Uh, another enemy to show up, so it's always a bummer. Here's Todd number two. Shooting the oil at me. I don't know why they came up. I guess because he's a grease monkey. He's always driving his car around, so he's going to use the oil, but... All right. And here's the bone. We need this bone to get into Anderson's yard, and you'll see why, but it is an essential item. So let's navigate back here. The reason why this level was so hard is because, again... Those enemies, you know, like Todd didn't respawn. So if you managed to get through this level but got hurt and you had to go back through the sewer, you were already behind the eight ball. So I think I'm doing much better than I used to do when I was a kid. So we'll see if I can uh, get back through that sewer without 
having to use the save state, but I don't know. Alright, let's see. I gotta jump over here. Should be a rat. Yep. I thought there's one more bird. There's the bird. And one more rat. There should be one more toxic pit and the exit. Alright. Cool. I don't even need that burrito. I'm just gonna grab it anyway, so. Alright, so let's go back through. I'll be safe and use the safe state again. We got no shame in that. Alright. Let's see if we can navigate back through. Medium jump with a rat. Of course, I didn't get a running jump on that, that's why. So the only good thing is, is you are, as you see, you have a, a brief kind of um, moment of invincibility when you get hit. So when you're playing this level, if you're already on the pit, you just barrel right through it. There's no sense of going back, so... Uh, the only upside. Is there a rat on this side? Oh, I freaking knew it, dude. I'm gonna jump right over. Boom, rat. Alright, let's see. Jump over here, medium jump, rat. Big jump, nice. Made the big jump. For every big jump you make, that's probably like saving yourself two hits. I mean, big jump, hit, hit. But doesn't matter. We should be coming up to the entrance here in just a moment, so. Medium jump. Didn't get a running jump on that, but I got a hot dog, and of course Earl's up here, so I can always kill Earl. Grab myself another burrito. Uh, you always try to shoot just before they come on the screen, and then let them come back. And you have to kind of, kind of edge your way forward, so when they show up, they don't respawn. Sometimes they'll respawn right where you killed them, and they'll hit you again. So. Alright, so we're at Mr. Anderson's house. You see he's on his riding lawnmower, chucking beer cans at you, so... Fortunately, this is why this is the best weapon in the game, because I have distance, and it's rapid fire. He had no chance, but if you're trying to burp or fart him to death, it's weird to say, um, it would be tougher. A lot tougher. So I grabbed the key on his lawnmower. I have to switch to the bone, because the dog, they eat your tickets. If you try to use the key on the shed, the dog will come kill you. But I throw the bone, I distract him, so... That's why you had to go through the junkyard. All right, so inside the shed, there are two items here. One for Butthead, which is the couch fishing pole. We'll get to that later. And then Beavis uses the chainsaw here, which is for only one use, so kind of weird, but I guess I get it. And of course, in typical fashion, we're going to destroy Anderson's property. We're going to chop down his tree. <laughs> and we're going to get a ticket, so... Chop down the whole tree. Uh, come on, pick it up. Alright, we've got to switch back to Beavis, obviously, because he has the remote. And run back to the TV. So we have one of two of the hardest levels done in the game. The hospital, which we'll do next, is also very hard. I got a feeling I'm going to be using a save state there, so hopefully not, but. We'll see if my adult self can uh, do this. All right, two tickets. Ah, keep going to the options menu. If you just press start, you just exit. But if you press any other button, you go to the options. So do I need to drop anything? Let's drop the bird because uh, I don't need that yet. All right, so we got actually got to go back to Burger World. I mentioned that uh, certain le areas of levels you can't access unless you have certain items. And one of the items is you have to go get that rancid burger so we're gonna run back to the dumpster and pick this up Whoa, this burger sucks dude we need a doctor we need a doctor now i've got this poison burger so what happens is is the longer i uh walk around i'm sick i'll slowly lose my health it'll say you know we're sick what the say and uh, obviously you can eventually die, but you clearly realize you have to go to the hospital, so... Now, again, I mentioned GamePro, and I'm going to show you why the GamePro came in handy, because there is a section of the hospital that you access when you're sick. Okay, first, let's talk about the hospital. <laughs> I always love this. Outside the hospital, you got security guards that just whoop your ass for needing medical assistance and bowling balls and skateboards. Like, don't quite get it myself, so... Uh, but anyways, that doesn't matter. You can run right through them because you can only access this area 
uh, when you are sick. If not, she blocks you. So walk into this door and hop on the table and Dr. Hottie over here will heal you. Looks like you boys have an acute burgeritis. This should clear, clear that rash. So it heals you. But as a kid, I'm playing the game, I think, okay, I'm just not sick anymore. That burger just must be a trap. So I just leave and go play the level. But you see there's a pair of scissors back there, to which you won't use until the very end of the game if you want the good ending. There's two endings, and I'll show you both. But you wouldn't know that as a kid. Like, I guess trial and error, but ideally, it wasn't until either a game pro or, or somebody told me what to do there, but um, I could never get the good ending because I never had the scissors, so... Alright, so here's our fat duty. made a few appearances in the uh, early show. And this guy here, <laughs> he just throws burgers at you. I don't know why in the hospital, but you see he's got American cheese in one hand and infinite burgers in the other hand. So we gotta uh, take him down. See, so yeah, just rapid fire. It's just so easy. Okay, so this actually might be the hardest level because I don't remember how to do it at all. So I'm gonna take this guy's scooter. And I have to drive through the hospital and avoid hospital bags. I think if you hit three hospital bags, he chases you and he'll jump on you and kill you. Automatic game over. So, uh, we'll see if I remember if it's three or four, but the only thing I think I remember is staying in the middle is better. Whoa, 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 whoa! These things are coming away faster than I remember. Yeah, staying in the middle, uh-oh, uh oh I'm gonna stop talking, I gotta be laser focused right now. Shit. Yes! I'm gonna blame that on talking, I wasn't paying attention, but you can see how difficult that is. Uh, so now he's dead, with the cigar still in his mouth. <laughs> But uh, that was definitely always a difficult one. Because like I said, as he catches up to you, he squashes you, game over, you gotta start over. So I learned early to do this level quickly because of the heartbreak of having to start over. So now that we've got the two hardest levels out of the way, I think we can kind of just cruise the rest of this game. So if I remember the order correctly, there is a certain order you have to follow because if you spend money you can't get the money back, and you need money to get to the drive-in. So I think, is that where we gotta go next? No, I need the bomb to go to the drive-in. So I think we have to go to Highland High School first, and then the Turbo Mall. I think that's what it is, so. So let's go to Highland High. All right, we'll see more familiar, ah, oh, just press C on the TV. I still have the remote equipped, so. That's my bad. Alright, back to the high school, and we'll switch to Butthead, Earl shows up, what was the code? My brother and I figured that, I think he shows up at every fifth door, so he's like at 100, then I think he shows up at 105, and then 110, I don't remember, so, oh, that's right, it's Buzz Cut, so, Buzz Cut shoots these electrical sparks at you, and what you have to do is, you have to burp on him or fart on him. Nothing else works until he gags. And then you gotta run real quick while he shuts the machine off and grab these uh, uh, chemicals. Okay, so I'll show you here real quick. Keep burping. Uh oh. Okay, so he's choking. I can grab A and B. See, they turn back on. So now I have A and B. You have to mix A and B together which will show you why we have to do that. But, of course, we see Buzzcut. We're going to see a couple other main characters of the show as we go on. I hate this level just because you got the, the, the hot chick that runs through, then you got the skateboards that just keep nailing you. So there's 105. I thought Earl was around here. Oh, 106. Damn it. Do not die. Kill Earl. Grab a burrito. All right. I'm going to switch to Butthead. Oh, here's Van Driesen, obviously, very uh, familiar. So reuse, recycle, and I told you before it's like a puzzle because they always give you little clues, so the floor can be slippery if there is soda pop on it. That'll come in handy later, which we'll show you, so um, grab that gum under the desk and then we'll leave. 
I think that's the only item in the game you... God damn it, that you really need. Uh, the hot chick, she slaps you as she walks by. And then you have that. You can go into a lot of bathrooms in this game. Most bathrooms... Uh, you can go into toilets. Sometimes they'll have uh, burritos. I mean, I don't know why the hell you'd eat food in the bathroom. But anyway, power can sometimes be found in there. But we don't need that. Uh, Earl should be showing up here. There's 114. I thought it's 115. There it is. I'm going to credit my little brother for picking up that code when we were kids. So I still remember it to this day. So And McVicker. So Principal McVicker, or as they call him, McDicker. You see the ticket lands on his head, and there's no way to get around it because his filing cabinet's here. First of all, there's a blacklist back, back there. It says Beavis, Butthead, and Edgar. So, <laughs> uh, actually, we run into Edgar. No, I don't think we ever run into Edgar. So, uh, what do I have? To, oh, the potion. So, this is where the potion comes in handy because I throw this down, and it knocks him out. So, we grab the ticket. And McVicker's dead. So we got another ticket. Like I said, this level, really easy, but there should be a hot dog over here. Hot dog. And then we got to go back, obviously fight Earl, run through the hot chick and skateboards. Oh, you son of a bitch. All right, so I'll have to kill Earl later. Grab some health. Get slapped, jump over to skateboard. Earl should be... Come on, seriously? Where the hell are you, Earl? Ow. Ow. There's no way in hell I'm about to die on Earl. So I gotta kill him. Get the burrito, he's gonna respawn, but that's okay because I will blast him in his nards. And then I'll switch to Beavis, get him some health. See if I can't get out of here. Earl should show up one more time, right? God, I can't believe I'm getting hurt this bad with the. Screw it, just run. <laughs> that see, this is where sucks comes in. Like when you're playing this without knowing how to beat the level. If I'm getting my 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 butt handed to me, I can just warp back here, get some health, and go back. Especially because I know where to go. But well, that's not gonna happen today. So. All right. All right, so I almost got one yeah. ticket fully complete. So now we have to go to the mall, which I need the bird. All these, yes, the pants. I need the laundry mat. so. Okay, let's go to the Turbo Mall 2000. Now, this is always good because there's security guards out here, the ones that we saw at the hospital. They're very easy to kill, so we can sit here and get our uh, health back. Okay, of course they'll respawn. So the trick with this is is that once I kill this guy, come on, you gotta be shitting me, dude. If I let him just chase me, there's usually like three or four of the guards here, so I'll just let him follow me all the way to the door so I don't gotta worry about it, and then I'll just sit here and kill him, get the health. If I was doing better with, in the uh, energy department, but obviously not doing so hot, so... Okay, so the mall's got all kinds of cool stuff. Got cool music. Gotta jump over shopping carts. Now we gotta go kill Todd, who's sitting inside here and just shooting oil. I guess it makes sense. At least there's oil samples here. Okay... And of course, he's gonna hit me off screen, so... I suppose it's only fair. Grab the burrito, and then we gotta get this oil. Okay, there's a free sample. Another one of those ones that it doesn't really look like you can pick that up, but you actually can pick up a can of oil, so we need that for the laundry mat. Why the laundry mat? Well, we'll show you here. Jump over some cart, we'll get hit by a cart. Okay, the toy store will come back to later. Oh, here it is. My favorite music in the entire game. I'm gonna shut up and we're gonna jam out. Of course they dance if you just are idle, so <laughs> a little added bonus to it, but I don't know why I just love this music so much. Alright, so if you remember in an early episode, they ran around and, and uh, used yogurt and they, they kind of rubbed it all over the place in the mall, so this is a reference to that, so he's going to throw uh, 
cones at me, which will hurt me, but... Uh. The second pea shooter, obviously they each need one. Now here's another area that you wouldn't really pay attention to, but you come into the bathroom and you're looking around, and you're like, oh, there must be something in the stall. No, really nothing in there. And you can blow those up with the bomb, but if you use the bomb, you can't beat the game. So it's, there's soap right there. There's a bar of soap. I picked it up. I need that for the laundry mat. I don't need detergent. I need soap. So I don't know. We'll see, but you'll see what I'm talking about here. I'll put it all together. See if I can't run past him without getting nailed. Alright, jump over the carts. That cart's just chasing me. This guard won't let you in the laundromat if you don't have the bar of soap. So, now just to be safe, I'm going to use the safe state, but the reason why you need the oil is, listen. You hear those squeaky hinges. If I try to open up this last one, this old lady jumps up and instantly kills me. I can't get past her. She just stabs me with an umbrella until you die, so game over. So you need to use this oil, and you oil the hinges, and you open it up nice and quiet. You got yourself a ticket. So, um, again, you wouldn't know that. Most games, especially the old you know, Nintendo and Genesis, especially if they were like puzzle-esque like this one, a lot of trial and error, so... You'd have to have a game over, and then you'd realize, oh, maybe I gotta go back and use the oil. The problem, though, is, is... Oop, I gotta go down to the pet store. Uh, the problem with that, though, is, is if you didn't play this level until, like, where I am now, you'd be pissed because you've already spent 20 minutes to a half hour getting to this point, so... Kind of a bummer. Alright, so, I'm gonna purchase this snake, because you see this uh, bird that's sleeping in the cage. I have to access the bird and get this snake, so it costs 50 cents which we do have money you see up there. I have zero now. You start with 50 cents. You need three dollars to get into the drive-in and you need like a dollar seventy to get some of the other weapons. Now if you buy the weapons early, you don't have enough money to get to the drive-in, which means the game is over. Unless I'm missing something, but I remember as a kid going back and trying to sell everything, couldn't sell anything. So you have to go in this order. You can't go to the drive-in too late or else the game, you can't unlock it. So. Alright, so he's got a key up there, and if I try to grab this key, and he says, dude, I can't carry any more stuff, so... What does he have? Gum. Uh, drop the gum, let Butt Beavis pick it up. So if I put the snake... See, watch. He blocks me from getting this key, I can't get it. But if I put the snake on the counter, I purchased it, so he's gonna wrap it. Let me package it for you, then I'll hurry up and grab the key. So now I have the key and the package snake. I'll run over here, open up the cage, oh, and then the uh, bird just immediately starts shitting eggs on you. Like, look at this. He always hits you. So it's like, if you're almost dead, don't stand there because it's going to get you. Alright, so we got to go upstairs to the army recruiting place. Jump over that. Now. Same thing here, trial and error, because you see there's obviously a glowing ticket down there. If I try to pick up that secret file, G.I. Joe here will kill me, so I gotta have a game over. So, naturally, you wouldn't really know this. I don't remember if this was in the show. I think it was in the early episodes, but this guy's afraid of snakes. You throw the snake down. He hits the deck. I'm gonna go up here and get this bomb. Then I can pick up the secret file. Of course, I don't have any more room, so... What? Beavis has no more stuff? That's... Alright, let's go sell some stuff first. <sighs> you look prepared. So the pawn shop. I can sell these headphones and this bird. And then you have to sell the binoculars that you find at the drive-in. That's what it is. To buy some of the other weapons in this game. But if you spend all the money on the weapons early, you can't get to the drive-in. So... Cool, I needed some of that. Here's some cash. The bird. He'll take the bird. So now we have room, and now we have 3.30. So, go back in here. He should still be scared. Oh, no. That did not work. I'm going to go ahead and just use the safe state real quick, because I don't know if we can get out of that without uh, messing up. So, let me just play it again real quick. I don't have to explain anything. I'll just shut up and run through this. Thank God for safe states, you know. I 
I thought the snake would still be there if you left the room, but obviously it's not, so you would die if you try to pick up that book. We'll switch to Beavis, sell this, sell the bird, and now we'll have enough to pick up the book, or the file. God damn it, bowling ball. Oh, I didn't buy the snake yet. I suck! I should edit this out, but as I promised, if I'm a buffoon and I ruin this, I'm going to just play all the way through, so... Let's go buy the snake. Wrap it up. Get the key. Get the snake. Switch to the key. It happens. You mess up. Grab the tickets. Then we'll go back up. Hey, I didn't get hit. That's pretty cool. I don't know if that's ever happened before. Ah, the cards. Now, you can destroy the cards. I'll show you that later, but uh, you, it requires a specific weapon, which we'll have to buy later in the game. So, All right, so he has the snake. Let's throw it down. We can pick up the bomb and the book. He can't pick up the ticket, so butthead. Obviously, having limited space really... Uh, is a bummer if you manage to get to a certain point in the game because if you drop something and you don't realize how important the item is some of these items are crucial they're you know specific to the game you got to go all the way back and try to find it again so all right but in any case i have the tickets i have what i need so I'll kill a couple of these uh, security guards grab a hot dog see what i mean they, they spawn so you have to essentially walk with them a little bit and push them off the screen. Actually, we'll switch to uh, no. Beavis. No. Because it's easier to walk and hit them with the uh, pea shooter. And we'll just walk back to the exit. Eh, screw it, we don't need it, so. All right. So now we have to go to the drive-in, okay? So I'm going to drop off some items so we have enough room to pick things up. So let's drop the book and the scissors so we don't need that right now. Put the ticket in there. Clearly, I'm almost there. Two more pieces. There's one at the drive-in and then one for couch fishing. And I'll show you all the couch fishing. All right. Four drive-in. So if you go to the drive-in, it has man-eating zombie chicks playing. Three bucks. Pay me three bucks or I'll call the cops. Go up here. Thank you. Now you can't go in the bathroom here, same thing, but we don't need to go in the bathroom. It's just that almost anywhere you can go to the bathroom, so. Okay, so I have this bomb, all right? Now you remember the message from Van Driesen earlier? He said, floors can be slippery, slippery if they have soda pop on them. So, you really wouldn't know this without a lot of trial and error because you can use this bomb as you'll see here, to blow up the snack bar and cover the floor in soda pop, which will come in handy in a moment, but cool. if you yeah. use that bomb on a toilet to get some power, I don't know if you can get the bomb back again, so I don't think you can beat the game. You see what I mean? There's a lot of trial and error, um, but it's frustrating because when you die, you get a game over. It's not like you have a checkpoint or something, so... Oh, balls. I gotta go back. I forgot the camera, so let's go back to the room real quick. I remember now. Once you're in the drive-thru, you have to take a picture of somebody and anger them enough to chase you, so we have to grab this camera, then we'll go back. So you have to forgive me. Like I said, it's been a good 12, 13 years. That's been since college since I played this game, so I'm a little rusty. A little rusty. Luckily, I've already paid, so I don't have to worry about it. So we'll go back through here. This water will slow you down, which doesn't seem like much now, but in a moment you'll see why that becomes a problem. Oops. And of course the rats slow you up a bit too. So that van's a rockin'. They say don't come a knockin'. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up these binoculars. We're gonna take a picture, then we're gonna run like hell back to the snack bar, and you'll see why Van Driesen's message comes in full circle. So take the picture. She is not happy. Oh no. Now, if she just hits you, 
she doesn't kill you one hit like the uh, the fat guy at the hospital, so it's not as bad, but she does a lot of damage. So as soon as you run in here, face first. So we get ourselves a ticket. So drive through is pretty simplistic, not very hard, but you really wouldn't know to use that bomb. You know what I mean? Like again, a lot of trial and error on that. So. Switch back to Beavis, who's almost dead. We gotta go back to the mall, because I do want to show you guys the uh, the other weapons that you can get. Obviously, I'm gonna get another dart gun for Butthead. All right. I need one more ticket, then we'll couchfish, and then we'll get to the end of the game. So, so let's go back to the mall. I gotta switch to Butthead, because Beavis is dead. <laughs> Kill off a couple of these guys, bring them with me. Let Beavis get at least one or two burritos. Oh. Alright, so that should be good. I could probably kill one more and then... Alright. So I'm okay getting hit. See, if I just let him walk with me, then I don't have to worry about the other ones spawning. So, and we'll just hurry up and get to the exit, or the entrance. All right, so I have money now, okay? Well, I will have money, because I gotta go buy, or I'm gonna go sell the uh, binoculars. Now remember, if I would have used this money earlier in the game, I wouldn't be able to get to binoculars, so. He gives me some money, so I can go back down to the toy store. Alright, so I'll switch. No. Beavis needs the... Uh, so I get the dark gun. I still got 70 cents left over. Now, Butthead uses this weapon here. It's a rubber bat with a boxing glove. I bought it, so I have 20 cents left. Okay. So he pulls it out of nowhere. Now, it does uh, good damage to the enemies, but it's so slow, and you see most of those enemies shoot projectiles at you, so it's not ideal. Really, the only two purposes that they serve is they break these grocery carts, so I can get burritos out of them. Okay. So, where are you at? So, I can get some burritos out of them. Now, obviously, Beavis has a dart gun, so we'll just run back to the exit, take the uh, police officer with us. But I'm gonna do some couch fishing, and I believe the rubber bat is the only weapon that can kill Earl. If I remember that correctly. So we'll see, but I'll definitely be doing some safe state there before I try that. Alright, let's go back to the house. So I need some couch fishing gear, which is in this couch okay so I hop up into the couch put my hand down there he can't hold any more items so I have those items in the bedroom which I'll get so I switch to the fishing pole and let's start with this I think there are six items the first one is a briefcase I think this brings me we'll see so you have to essentially spam the C button as fast as you can and pull up the uh, whatever you caught so I think this is Stuart yeah. So Stuart, with his I heart W, because he can't wear his winger shirt, and he'll tell you, give you a little hint here, there is a really, there is a way to get really close to Guar, which is a reference to the second ending, the better ending, uh, which I'll show you. So, okay, so pizza, pizza. Hey, shut up. I got is that the cat? <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out. I think this is the cat. The cat. Okay, so cat, and then gum. Gum is the ticket. I know that much, so we'll get the last piece. Boot is what I think is the death, so I'm going to save state this, because I think you get instantly killed if you do this. Hey, shut up. I think I this something. is Earl, <laughs> if you pull him up. Oh, yeah. So, if I switch to my weapons, he's in the house now. Ow. If I switch to the gun, Ow. I can't do anything. And he catches you. Nice try, chump. This time it's over. And you get a game over. So, obviously, they're in hell. I think we're dead or something. This sucks, dude. In their burger, you know, world gear. So, I mean, that's what happens. You get a game over. 
and then you gotta start the whole damn game over again. You, unless you have a password, to which, again, I told you, sometimes it's very difficult, so... Let's load this real quick. So you saw that the darts did not hurt him, but I think... The rubber bat does hurt him. I think that's the only item that'll hurt this version of Earl. So, let's run away. Yes. Now, I think this Earl actually keeps respawning in your house, if I remember correctly. Yep. So there's Earl again. So it kind of sucks. Uh, again, there's really no point of using the boot because Earl's always there, and then he's going to kill you. So I don't ever use the boot. I'm going to use the save state. I'm going to switch that out. There's other items that we can get. What else do we have? We have the book. Okay, I'll let Beavis pick up the scissors, and, and we don't need the boot anymore. So, yeah, scissors for the end of the game. Who's the book? That's not Stuart. Oh, I know who it is. Hey, you remember, I got she had her own spin-off, uh, briefly, after Beavis and Butthead. Daria. And she'll give you a little tip. Many important things get stuck to gum. So obviously I know what to do, but I've been fishing here, using different items, and there's one more item in here. I'm going to grab this. This should be the donut. And I guess you can kind of figure out what the hey, donut is going to bring. <laughs> so let's pull him up real quick. And a police officer. So what we're going to do is kill him real fast. Now this guy doesn't respawn in your apartment like Earl did. So as you can see, I can just hurt him normally. So that's fine. We're going to switch back to the pole. Go to the gum. Hey, shut up. I got something. <laughs> and then this should be the ticket, the final piece. Then I'll show you the uh, two endings. Of course, we got to go put the ticket together, and then we will grab the full ticket. So, All right. there it is, two complete yeah. tickets. So, if you walk away, now I remember the first time I played this and finally got the tickets, I didn't realize that you actually had to go back and grab the tickets. They're technically glowing, if you can see that, but you really can't. So, uh, after some trial and error, I finally went back and grabbed the ticket, so I was not happy about that. <laughs> Alright, so we finally get to go to the Guar uh, concert. So, we're going to go here, and like I said, I'm going to show you both endings. I will save, uh, save state and show you. So, this guy lets me in. Those tickets look pretty beat up. Enjoy the show. Uh, that was cool. Let's save yeah. it. Okay. So naturally, I would think just go in the doors. But you can actually keep going to the right, and that's where the good ending is. But even if you get to the right, if you don't have the scissors, which I showed you earlier, you can't activate the good ending. So uh, I think they're both good endings, by the way. But anyways, let's go into the concert. All right. That's just yeah. how it ends. Okay, you see them jamming out. War. Classic, you know. All right. And we see them, you know, rocking out the Guar concert. I, technically, there's a lot more to this ending than uh, the good ending, as they call it, but this is pretty cool. So it says, congratulations, you got to the show. Now can you get to the band? Obviously inferring that there's something else that you can do. Sadly, you have to play through the whole damn game again to get to that. So luckily, we have emulation, so we will load this. And we're going to cruise on to the right-hand side. So I have a pair of scissors and this cat. So normally you wouldn't know what to do with the cat. You can't sell it. You can't use it for anything else. And you really wouldn't know this, again, without trial and error. But there's a dog here that you have to throw this cat and he runs away. You wouldn't know that until you got killed by the dog and then had to start all the way over. And then, oh, maybe I throw the cat. But eh, kind of frustrating. So... Okay, so along the way we run into these bodyguards, and they are both very tough because they take a lot of hits to, to kill them, and they do terrible damage to you. So if you get hit with them, and they throw knives, because, you know, all bodyguards have knives. So, we'll kill them. Oh, We'll just run through them, because we don't need a lot of power. 
So I'll just run through. So there's the entrance. Hurry up, get in there. So there's one more guy over here. And you can't kill him. Okay, you can't kill this bodyguard who's throwing... Well, that looks like a banana. That's what it is. It is... No. Yes, it is a banana. So the only way you can stop him is... And again, you wouldn't really know this even if you had the scissors. But you have to cut this rope and nail him with, with uh, uh, a sandbag. So now I can jump on stage here, and again, if you're not paying attention, you gotta grab these little pieces of leather, and then you can go on stage and... Right. Good ending. You get to party with war. So, it reminds me of dodgeball when they get the S&M gear instead of the actual uniform, so... But, that's the good ending. You got to the band, so... And then you get the credits with Van Driesen playing a little lesbian seagull on the old guitar. Come on, and that's the game. So, okay. like I said, it's a, it's a difficult game, especially as a kid. Not so much just because of the, the, the jumping is kind of buggy, the running is kind of tough to get down. Of course, the enemies can be difficult, but it's the trial and error of it all, you know? You... You get to a level and you have no idea that you have to use that bone to throw the dog out until you get killed. But if you played the game for you know four or five levels and then go to that spot, you're going to be pissed that you have to go all the way back, especially if your password doesn't work, and do it again. So, as I said, fortunately I've played it a lot in the past. I know how to do it all, but it's still a really fun game. I've always really enjoyed it. It's got a great soundtrack, I think, especially uh, for the Sega Genesis. I'm not sure who did the soundtrack, but it's enjoyable. So, But either way, that's it. That's the playthrough for Genesis, Beavis, and Butthead. So if you've played the game before, you like it, you hate it, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions about games that you want to see, i got a whole hard drive filled with games that I'm trying to figure out which ones to do playthroughs for. I've got... I want to do another one of my favorites, an RPG for the Genesis, so I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, you know, film that without making it too long. But either way, I had a great time playing this game, just like Wizards of Warriors, so I'm definitely going to do some more. But in the meantime, let me know what you think down in the comments. When you're down there, like and subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.